What's up, everybody? Hello, hi, excitement, exuberance, and other exciting things. It's, it's, don't get your hopes up. I'm Josh Allen, aka Lore, joined by Mike B, aka, aka Mike B. He's a, he's got a face and like stuff and things. You can, you can see like the bottom part of it right now. Yeah. On the like, on the Twitch. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so this is our this is our show. It's called "Don't Get Your Hopes Up." Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, well, rip. <laughs> <I guess>. <laughs> 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 we're we're, um, we're going to have some announcements a bit later on. So. Um, Keep a listen out for that. Uh, and if you're not watching this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sure someone has commented with the exact timestamp or something. So if you're completely impatient and don't want to listen to our opinions and instead just want to use us for our announcements, then <laughs> I, mean, I guess that's an option. I'm not interested in these guys talking about things, but I want to know exactly what they're talking <laughs> about. It's specific time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if there's people who like listen to podcasts that timestamp everything like out of order. Like if they look at like, here's the list of topics and then they just say, OK, I want to hear that bit first. And then I want to hear that bit because I want to know what they think about uh, Nintendo's new uh, cardboard dildo before <laughs> I find out about YouTube Ouch. doing other things or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, that sounds painful. It does. I mean, I can so, imagine, maybe sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the big thing that everybody's been asking if we were going to talk about today, which, yes, is the changes that YouTube just made, like, yesterday. Yeah, like last um, night. Yeah, like talking about the um, uh, changes to their partner program. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it kind of boils down to there well actually you can probably talk about this better than i can because you've got a lot more relevant like very recent knowledge of what like how youtube works i can sort of guess based on like ages ago when i was still relevant hmm. but damn yeah so like um all, all i really know about this at this point is that i got an email like super late last night that was like hey by the way we're demonetizing your channel because you haven't gotten four thousand hours of watch time you got the email too yeah Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I mean, I haven't actually been paid for my YouTube channel in probably a year and a half or longer because right. I just don't I don't use it. So I don't earn money off of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you don't have 4000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and a thousand subscribers, then uh, rip, you're done. Yeah, that's pretty much the case. Uh, 4000 hours doesn't seem like a lot and it varies wildly depending on what kind of content you do. If you're doing a lot of like long form let's play or VOD uploads or something, you'll hit 4,000 hours. Like for sure. Like hmm. if you just upload every stream you ever do, someone's going to watch them all and you're probably going to get half of those 4,000 hours in a year. Uh, but that's dumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, and the other threshold of a thousand subscribers, it's not entirely clear what they deem to be a thousand hours, a thousand subscribers. Like, is it net or is it just pure gain? Um, on the Starcraft two subreddits, there was a thread that was like these, these people that you may watch their videos or whatever will possibly lose because, and they were using social blade to determine whether or not, uh, they were, um, they've cut they made the, the cut the threshold of a thousand subscribers and what social blade doesn't take into account is uh uh your actual or the actual gain versus your net uh gain because your net gain is going to be like mine for example is in the negatives ever since i stopped doing warframe content i've just been slowly losing like 100 or 150 a month no matter what i do uh it's basically it kind of floats around there like 100 150 a month and um Dick. huh Dick. Yes. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Um, and uh, so my net is actually a loss. It's like negative 2000 or something. 
but I did gain over a thousand, just barely over a thousand subscribers. So it's not clear. Like I might get one of these, but honestly, I, I don't, I don't feel like I would because I, I have 140 something thousand hours of watch time in the past 12 months. So that would be really silly if I had a hundred, I have a thousand thirty seven uh, subscribers gained and 140 some thousand, then I would lose uh, those, uh, the, that stuff. But uh, what were you gonna say? Well, I was going to say, I actually read this completely differently. Mm. I read it as you need to have a thousand subscribers at all. So that's and so that's the thing. It's like, yeah, it reads like that as well. Uh, and you would. But when I when I read it and obviously when Chisel read it, too. Yeah, uh, he read that the opposite way. So, yeah, um, I yeah, think like the, the way you're interpreting it is correct. But I guess we'll just wait and see. I mean, I feel like what's happening is YouTube is very slowly kind of pulling back on, on the uh, partner program. Uh, this feels like it's a reaction to the uh, Logan Paul thing, right? Uh, it feels like it because that just happened. So you would think, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they're going to pull back on it. Uh, they're going to basically punish everybody except for, <laughs> you know, the, the people who are constantly uh, losing them advertisers. Um, yeah, this like uh, as I was looking at this, I, I'm like, OK. This this doesn't do anything against people like Logan Paul, because the whole reason people even found out that he did anything was that he gets well over 4000 watch hours and he doesn't have to worry about the definition of incoming subscribers. Yeah, <laughs> he's getting that many constantly anyway. So the first thing I thought when I when I read that, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, OK, well, how is this supposed to do anything about the 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 dick bags on YouTube? Who, what's the problem here? And that makes me actually kind of wonder if it even is meant as a as at least as a direct response to the Logan Paul thing, um, which a lot of people have been assuming. Um, yeah. And I, I think you're right that it totally reads that way initially. But um, like they, they said something. Um, uh, While this change will tackle the potential abuse of a large but disparate group of smaller channels, which I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, we also know that the bad action of a single large channel can also have an impact on the community and how advertisers view YouTube. So I kind of, I feel like this is an advertising thing. I feel like, honestly, thinking about it, what would what would lead you to a situation where you want to cut out a whole lot of potential ad dollars being spent? Um, and the answer to that is, well, so YouTube doesn't just hate money. I know it seems like YouTube just hates money a lot of the time. <laughs> But the reality is that advertising as a revenue generator, just because time goes on, uh, is becoming less and less effective, at least for for things like YouTube. It's doing really, really well on things like Facebook, where they know literally everything about you. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't do as well on things like YouTube uh, advertising revenue, like even um, uh, creators have been seeing an overall decline in ad revenue per viewer and per uh, like play uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what's happening here, I think this is part of YouTube trying to get themselves in a better position to negotiate for uh, stronger ad buys, because if you say, OK, you can get 10,000 um, ad views or whatever, or a hundred a million ad views right uh, on our on our network and you point to OK, and it'll show up on things like this. And it's like some kids screaming into their microphone for five minutes because they thought it would be funny. And it's like, yeah, sure. That's an ad because apparently 20 other people thought it was funny. So they're sub to him. And so they got a partner program invite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then that's the sort of thing that like if, if they had to tell advertisers that sort of information, I don't know. They actually have to tell advertisers that, but it's the sort of thing that uh, it would be really easy for YouTube to feel like they will be in a better position to negotiate the pricing of their ads if they can say, yeah, you're going to go on all of our high quality channels, yeah. right? Like all of our partners are going to be able to show this ad. And uh, because we've done all these things that don't actually make sense to someone who doesn't use YouTube as a creator, but sound really great if you're trying to buy ad space. Um, like that, that's kind of how I'm reading this whole thing is it's mostly political in that sense. Uh, yeah, so they're. Yeah, they're they're basically trying to create more valuable inventory uh, and ad buys for the their advertisers because yeah, it's true that there's a lot of imagine like every viral video that like happens, uh, like there is that one 
of the uh, imagine like any police brutality video that goes viral on YouTube, you yeah. know, like maybe they don't want to have, you know, uh, some some random ad or something like that beforehand, you know, and a company's just like, wow, my ad is on that. Is that what I bought? Is that what I bought? And all it takes is like one person for, in that respect. And that probably doesn't happen often, but it, it has happened before because uh, we've seen it like at Zam, you know. We've seen people like people that had bought ad buys from us and they're like, wow, we don't want it on this content. I have been at the end of that, actually, because I was the mm. one that they were like, I don't know if I want to necessarily have my ads in front of that guy. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so, yeah, that is very much a very real thing. Um, but the, the but the other end of the scale, right, the other end of the scale that's very quickly fucking getting launched into orbit here uh, is that it's turning off incentive for new people to come on and use youtube as a platform to launch whatever you know it is that they want to do um versus say like you know twitch which now has such a broad amount of coverage of things you could do and they keep adding more uh things that you could do that are kind of like generally accepted remember social eating came out and everyone's like that's a fucking joke you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then like now it's like irl and everything and it's completely changed to what it was in like 2015 or 14 um it's not that and you know, maybe maybe people don't recognize this, or maybe they do. But if you are getting four thousand hours, you're not making any money, anyways. You're making. I mean, I have one hundred forty four thousand hours. I don't make shit off that, right? Um, so it's it's not it's not uh, they're not making any money off of it. So they they don't necessarily are not really losing anything by this happening. It's just a slap in the face to everybody who tried or maybe is trying uh, and it's discouraging to them when they could just be like, you know what? Twitch has a very clear and concise list of achievements that will get me going to the direction that I need to go in order to turn this into something that I can make a dime off of. And that's the thing is like they're going to turn away those people uh, and they're going to go to Twitch uh, or whatever other platform manages to pop up in the next few years uh, because Twitch has made themselves more uh, new user friendly, like on the surface. You know? Yeah, I think honestly, I think the biggest thing is just the way they went. Like, I actually agree with this change in the uh, on the whole. I actually mm -hmm. think the change itself makes a lot of sense. Um, they're, they're, they even go into some metrics in their actual post saying... Um, uh, though these changes will affect a significant number of channels, 99% of those affected were making less than $100 per year in the last year, with 90% earning less than $250 in the last month. So that pretty and, much and ties that, into... By the way, what that means, by the way, is they couldn't even cash out. They need more than $100 to cash out. Exactly, yeah. So this this really only, like, 99% of those affected were making less than $100 per year in the last year basically means that these guys were not getting paid anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's affecting primarily channels that are not already making money off of YouTube. Um, so when you look at it from that perspective, then this feels more like cleanup than anything else. Like yeah. this is just basically like, like Twitch doesn't give affiliate status to people on Twitch who have never streamed and do not make, do not get viewers. Like if you stream once ever, you don't get affiliate status on Twitch. Right. This I kind of see as the equivalent for YouTube is they're basically saying, well, OK, yeah, sure. Uh, it'd be great if you could eventually make money. But we're setting this minimum before you can actually get into the partner program because we're throwing a whole lot of ad views at like someone who thought maybe they could make a few pennies off of their Christmas present opening <laughs> video when they sent it around to their family members. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's sort of where that's sitting, I think. Yeah, and, and I, I just think the way they presented it was really, really dumb. <laughs> yeah, which is not un, is not uncharacteristic of YouTube, it seems. Yeah, uh, but I mean, going all the way back, and this is what I started with. Like they've they have been for years trying to rein in this partner program that they just let get completely out of fucking hand, uh, and a lot of us benefited from it, obviously. Mm. Um, but initially it was very difficult to get partner status, right? It was like you needed 10,000 or some, some, something thousands of, uh, of subscribers, which was very difficult to get, uh, and then a certain amount of views or whatever. Um, they originally, like, I remember back in like the 2010 days, they wouldn't even let gaming, like if you made yeah, gaming that's right. content, they would you not do partnered. gaming content. Yep. Yeah. 
And then what they started doing, the only way to get gaming content on, well, a lot of people thought this, was to sign with a, uh, a CD, no, um, God, it's been so long, MCN, with a multi-channel yeah. network. <clears throat> and they would manage the, uh, the relationship between YouTube and the streamer, or the uh, content creator. And so that was how you became partner uh, for a lot of people. And what ended up happening was they gave out this service or this this uh, authority, this MCN authority to so many different companies that just made it big. Um, like, for example, first off, there was like Maker, Polaris, whatever it was called back then. Um, and they, you know, they they did they got like Total Biscuit. They got uh, they got Jesse Cox. They got Dodger. They got a bunch of these key people that you see around now uh they got me too but you know that's besides the point uh, <laughs> um and then there was like full screen that got their hands on like a bunch of people and then there was curse who got mcn status and mm. they just fucking let everybody in yeah and that's that opened the floodgates to just so many people getting uh getting partner status and then youtube and we knew this was coming because we talked about it then we were like well, after we saw what curse was doing we were like oh youtube's gonna see all this money that they're losing and they're gonna want to take over it and now what? MCNs are basically gone uh, yeah. or like being thinned out and losing their uh, the amount of flexibility and power they had because now YouTube has basically automated it or or handling it directly, which is usually automated. Um, and they're cutting out the middleman. And so now they're now they're taking all of those millions of partners and they're trying to clean it up, just like you said, trying to clean <laughs> it up and yeah. clean up this huge mess that they made with all these loose ends. And that's exactly what it feels like they're doing now. This is like one of the final stages. I wouldn't be surprised if if a channel like mine got cut, you know, and maybe maybe channels like uh, like, you know, like Jesse Cox or something like people who are you know, pushing the, uh, the between 250,000 and a million, maybe they're going to be looked at. It's like, ah, well, you know what? Uh, you're not quite big enough for us. And they might get cut because they're just trying to further rein that in. It might happen. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that and it's like, ah, no, there's no way. Like you're, you're making enough to get paid. Like you're, you're doing lots of content on YouTube. You got plenty enough subscribers like that. That seems like this, this is the sort of channel that YouTube should be encouraging, but YouTube invariably does exactly what I don't think they should do. So, <laughs> so there's that immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but also like, uh, like thinking about it, like they've been, they've been spending a while, like really trying to turn themselves into Netflix or you or Hulu. Yeah. Like, YouTube. Red. Exactly. Yeah. Like they've been doing that for so long where they're like, okay, yeah, we're, well, what we really want is to take these people who have made YouTube channels that now watch like TV channels or watch like television shows or whatever. And we want to put those guys first and foremost. Like, I actually think it's completely possible that you might be right. Like, it's a, it's a little bit tinfoil hat, but uh, it's it's entirely possible that these guys are the, like the, the YouTube is literally just going. We want to slowly phase out. Content creators mm -hmm. on our channel, and we only want celebrities. That's that, um, that. That's what it feels like it's going to. It feels like it's going that direction mm -hmm. uh, there right now. They have. They're the, the partner thing with the MCNs. They have the same deal with Vivo and I think somebody else. Uh, and Vivo has a contract with like three or four of the big, the big five or whatever, like major recording uh, labels, distributions. Um, so basically they have all the music. If you look up like any random band, uh, like mainstream band, it's probably out of Vivo channel, like the offspring Vivo or something. Yeah. Um, and they, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually YouTube gets to the point and does the same thing to them. Like they're just trying to cut out and make money by cutting things out and basically bring things in house because we've not really heard anything about YouTube being uh, uh, profitable. Like, I think the only thing we heard was like last year we talked about it, I think. And it was like, oh, they, they, they're finally getting close to breaking even or something like that. Uh, but nothing that necessarily says YouTube itself is making a profit. Um, right. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they're just like, well, we can't keep carrying this, you know, this loss leader <laughs> uh, <laughs> forever. <laughs> it's supposed to be a loss leader, yeah. not loss eternity. <laughs> <laughs> loss entire thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, they're going to keep on trying to cut corners and doing whatever they can to uh, save pennies on the dollar. But pennies on the dollar is, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on, you know, a hundred million bucks. So it's yeah. completely worth their time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, um, it's super interesting. I, I think, 
Like to me, I think the I think everybody would be feeling a lot better about this. Like I was saying earlier, I think the way that they described this whole thing to people mm-hmm. was super bad, super bad. Like I found out about these changes by getting an email saying that my channel was going to be demonetized. Yeah, it was like, like by the end of the month or something, right? Yeah, and like uh, I'm actually going to pull up the email here again real quick. I got it right um, here. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, it says under the today we are announcing changes to the YouTube Partner Program. While our goal remains to keep YPP open to as many channels as possible, we recognize that we need more safeguards to place uh, to place in place to protect creator revenue across the YouTube ecosystem. Basically, they're sacrificing you and everybody else for yeah. the greater good. Uh, and it, that's why it goes under the new eligibility requirements announced today. Your YouTube channel, uh, this one's Profit on Fire, is, is no longer eligible for monetization because it doesn't meet the new threshold of 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. And so here's it says, it says yeah. you're going to lose all access to all monetization tools and features associated with YouTube Partner Program February 20th, 2018. Not entirely true there, by the way. Uh, you will still have access to, I think, like end cards, uh, and custom thumbnails, which previously was not something that was available to non-partners, uh, oh, okay. which, which I felt like that, cl- that when I clarified that, I was like, I was just like, wow, man, fuck you guys. Like, <laughs> you like yeah, no, no. But the stuff that makes our content look good. You yeah, you keep that. <laughs> yeah. But the stuff that makes you money. And uh, no, we're going to take that out. We're going to take yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think. I think. I think the the first the the important stuff is kind of the stuff that we were talking about here, the stuff that they needed to get through in this post, like even in the email and like maybe wait a few days to send the email before you uh, uh, after you post the blog post, let that let the news start to circulate. And then someone gets an email saying that they're going to be uh, they're going to be fired, basically. Yes, yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, like, I think they needed to get across. If you're losing monetization, you weren't making money anyway. Mm -hmm. And I like some sort of sense of like, hey, they need to be a lot smarter about how they're describing these things so that we actually know for sure. Do they mean 1000 subs at all ever or do they mean 1000 subs gained a year? Mm -hmm. Um, But also they needed to give some better sense of what a thousand subs and 4000 watch hours looks like. Um, like Yeah. How many actually is that? Like. I, I saw 4,000 watch hours and I'm like, okay, hang on. Let me try and do some crazy math in my head. And I like, I deal with these sort of metrics all the time because of what I do for a living. Um, but like looking at, looking at that, I was like, all right, okay, 4,000 watch hours. So if I make two minute videos, two minute or less videos on YouTube and I release 10 of those a month and I have a thousand subs how many like just trying to do all this math in my head and it's just like <laughs> what, what does this actually even equate to um and like of those of those subs how many of those subs actually watch and so on because like you can have a thousand subs and only 10 of them actually watch your videos um so yeah they need to get across a better sense of what that was they need to get across a better sense of this uh, this was only affecting people that really weren't ever going to get paid anyway. Like you, you're just not making enough money off of these ads to ever actually get a paycheck. Uh, and, and sure, you could probably argue that a channel that starts out like this and grows will eventually get the 50 bucks or whatever it was that they yeah. would have earned. But um, that's that's kind of a I don't I don't know. That's a, that's a little bit of a um, that's a tough argument to to really make. I think it sucks, but uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's not the end of the world, at least. And I honestly, if I think if they had framed this whole thing more as, hey, we need to clean out partner program status from a whole lot of channels that aren't really making anything. And here's how we've decided to categorize aren't really making anything. And instead framed it and framed it more that way rather mm-hmm. than, hey, guess what? You don't qualify for our new rules that you haven't read yet. Your channel's being shut down. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, You're fired. Yeah. 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 Like that's, that's super shitty. Like I, I do kind of like in a way that they, that at least now there's like a, like there's a set goal. Like I need to get to a thousand subs and I need to create enough content to get those thousand subs to contribute 4,000 watch hours over a year. Like that. Like how Twitch has a list of achievements or goals yeah. for you to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they're, they're going backwards. Like, mm. 
they're either going backwards or they're so late to the fucking party. It's laughable. Like, remember, they, they announced middle of last year. Oh, you can now subscribe. They, they, they named it something else. I can't remember what they called it. But basically, it was the five dollars monthly subscription. And it was just like, really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was your idea. That was the thing you could do. Like, and it was the same price, too. Like, they couldn't they couldn't be like, oh, it's a bargain. It's only like two dollars or one dollar or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah. Like some way to incentivize people to to sub there or whatever. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're, I don't know which direction they're going. Um, I don't think they know which direction they're going. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. I feel like the next, and they've already made steps towards Surge attacking it. Uh, but I'm worried about people, or people like me, actually. Like I have a YouTube channel and I have a Patreon account. And if it wasn't for the Patreon account, there would be no YouTube channel. Fuck, if there, it wasn't for the Patreon account, there would probably be no me doing this, right? Uh, because YouTube revenue is so, uh, just so atrociously bad. Um, but they're going to see that there's money there, that there is a, the people are making money almost exclusively off YouTube content, but through another you know, means. And they're either going to put it in the rules somewhere that you can't do that, and that's going to, you know, discourage some people from doing it. Um, or they're going to find some way to actively block it or something. They're going to find something, not necessarily block the site, but like, for example, uh, unless you were like grandfathered in, new people, new partners uh, are not able to link a Patreon account as a official link for your YouTube channel. So like... At the end of a YouTube video, I if you watch any of my YouTube videos, at the end is like a plaque, a little card that comes up, and it'll show like you know, here's another video, here's another video, uh, here's me if you want to sub, and then here's a Patreon account, and a link will go right to it. New newer people cannot make that link that leads over because they will they will block Patreon, so they clearly know it's there, yeah, and they know it's making money, and they're gonna figure out a way to get that money, whether it is stop that revenue from going that direction and hope that it somehow trickles into their shitty fucking subscriber plan. Um, or just, I don't know, uh, block or, or fire people that use it. Yeah. I, 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 I feel like a lot of people probably have their eyes on, like I'm sure Twitch has their eyes on Patreon as well. It's less common for a full-time Twitch streamer to use Patreon just because Patreon kind of, kind of came along well after Twitch had their subscriber base in place. I think it's also in um, their uh, their uh, terms of use for partners that you can't partner agreement that you can't use uh, or promote other services in support that was of it. in support of yeah because uh, I can't quote it but that, that's the reason why I don't promote uh, that. I mean it makes sense if you're on Twitch okay. to support Twitch support me through Twitch right if you're on YouTube yeah, yeah, or something yeah. else and supporting that and that's kind of how I how I promote it but yeah I'm pretty sure that you can't you can't actually do it. Okay yeah I had. Because I every once in a while I still see someone promoting their Patreon, so maybe they're just flying under the radar or something. Probably. Um, but either way, it's like there's less of a reason for a Twitch streamer to open a Patreon because you're not going to be like, "Hey, sub to me on Twitch and also on Patreon." Yeah. You're just going to be like, "Fucking sub to me on Twitch." Mm -hmm. Would you like to sub twice? Give me a tier two sub, Jesus. <laughs> like yeah, I get yeah. something out of that. Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why Twitch put that in. It's like, yeah, wait, people I'm want sure. to spend more money? Pfft, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like Twitch has been really smart about how they're taking on Patreon in that they've just been like, here's okay, Patreon. We're gonna we're gonna do what you're doing, but we're going to tie it directly into our own platform and give direct raw benefits for doing so on Twitch. Um and sure that like it's it's not as granular as Patreon. You can't have like fifteen different tiers or however many it is you can have on Patreon. Mm -hmm. You have the three and you can't really adjust the pricing on them either. I don't actually know if you can on Patreon. Um Wait, you could you could adjust everything on Patreon. Okay, yeah. So it's like it's just like a, a recurring Kickstarter, basically. Mm -hmm. yep. Um But uh if you're like if you're a Twitch streamer, you you don't have a need for a Patreon necessarily. Um if you're a YouTuber, you fucking need a Patreon. <laughs> like, yeah. you yep. fucking need that thing because you, yeah, unless you're, <laughs> yeah, unless you are at the like Total Biscuit, Jesse Cox, fucking PewDiePie, whoever. Well, even point. Jesse Cox has one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, yeah, like, uh, Phil DeFranco has one. Like, yeah. Fuck, a lot of the big uh, YouTubers have one. Not the, not obviously at the mega stars, not like the 20, 20 year old mega stars, like Rice Gum and the Paul Brothers. Sure. Um, but yeah, like all the guys in between, totally. Well, and there's like, 
I, I, I guess kind of where I was going was, do you need one versus not so much? Would it be beneficial to have one? If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like if you're, if you're, I'm confident that Jesse Cox makes enough money off of YouTube and maybe he's going to then tell, yell at me later and say, I was totally wrong, but I'm, I'm positive <laughs> that there's enough income coming to him through YouTube just on ad revenue, purely based on how many, um, uh, views he gets that he's probably okay. And maybe, maybe he has sponsor as well or something. I don't actually know. Um, I don't watch YouTube anymore, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is kind of part of the problem. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, it, 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 there's a difference between sure. Could Jesse Cox get by off of just ad revenue? Yeah, maybe. Um, is it a good idea for him to also have a Patreon? Yes, absolutely. Like yeah, this yeah. is an extra revenue stream and there's no such thing as too much income. His right? personal Patreon has $8,000 point right now. So that's his, I'm pretty sure he's not making so much money on YouTube that the Patreons are nice to have. I feel oh, like yeah. Patreon is definitely complementing his income nicely in a way that YouTube is failing to do. And it's forcing, you know, creators to use another platform. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, there's a, there's a difference between need and can benefit from, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I totally. say that as someone who lived off of primarily ad revenue, but I lived in a basement in Michigan. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you, you dig deep enough. You can not find even, a way to live off of a lot of things. Yeah, Not even in a town you would recognize the name of. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you might because weirdly, um, what's his name? The guy who did Breaking Bad did a TV series about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. What's his name? Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Cranston? No, 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 no. no. The creator. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but it's called Battle Creek mm. and it was a really shitty series that had, <laughs> it was, it was not good. Um, I, I enjoyed it just because they occasionally went to places I recognized and I'd be like, mm-hmm. but, um, then I moved to SoCal and now every other television show, they occasionally go to places. <laughs> that <I recognize. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Grew up in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. CSI Mike's backyard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, YouTube, uh, is once again, uh, killing everyone, um, by doing weird things way after everyone else is doing weird things everyone else is <laughs> doing weird things way after everyone else has figured out how to do it properly yeah exactly god damn it's that's so true and so speaking of doing weird things I, this is actually just a direct i don't even there isn't even a, all of the other things in this list are weird things so i don't even need to go down a chain on this one <laughs> i can i can just say so speaking of doing weird things Nintendo's announcement today um, is actually super interesting. Uh, they announced a, a Nintendo La- Labo? Labo? Labia? I actually, I actually forgot the actual name because I wrote Labia in the notes. <laughs> so I actually forgot the real name. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you watch the video um, for it yet? I did watch the video, yeah. Man, these um, guys are fucking geniuses. So, so yeah, like, <clears throat> I was looking at this thing. I, I know you were kind of talking about this as well. But like I was looking at this thing and I was like, OK, it's made out of cardboard. It's going to break immediately. Like maybe maybe it'll last me a, a, a couple of weeks. But hang on, that that's not that's not really what this is about. Right. Like this is the sort of thing. It's like I got to build a thing and like it's showing like little kids using it and stuff. And I was like, holy shit, fucking Mike is going to love this thing because it's going to be like, hey, hey, Declan. <laughs> Mm-hmm. How'd you like to build a robot suit? <laughs> right. Who wouldn't want to, right? Yeah. Like if I was five, I would be all over this shit. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what every kid loves building something, Legos, Duplos, mm. blocks, whatever. Uh, and this is just another thing that we could build. And in the $70, $70, whatever it was like box of cardboard. Yeah. I uh, wonder if the actual box itself could be used for something uh but yeah in that in a box of cardboard comes like seven different like you know things you could cut out and then of course there's the game or whatever associated with which i'm assuming is going to be kind of like wii sports where it's like a bunch of things in one cartridge um 
because that would have the only thing that really makes sense. Uh, and then separately, well, you could buy like the rope, the the mech, the mech suit thing, because I guess that's just a lot of things. Cardboard. But the reason why I say that they're geniuses uh, is because they came out with a thing that's going to appeal to, you know, obviously not everyone, but it's going to make everyone talk about it. And the fucking memes are everywhere already. <laughs> and like, it doesn't matter if you are not going to buy one, you know about it and the memes are great. So you're going to share them, which is going to get somebody to see it and say, whoa, I have a switch and I, my kids love building shit. Let's get this thing. They would love that. And that's how it's going to happen. It's putting the fucking cereal, the, the, the fruit loops and the lucky charms on the <laughs> bottom shelf at the grocery store. They mm -hmm. know the kids see that shit. And once the kids see it, yep. that's it. They want it. So it's fucking genius, man. It's just cardboard. It's, yeah. it's specially cut cardboard or something, sure, and there's software associated with whatever, whatever, but it's still just fucking cardboard. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I'm yeah. totally going to get one. I'm actually... So I actually hadn't realized that all of the the things came in. They, they, so the 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 thing that you purchase actually comes with like seven or eight different things you can build in it. You don't have to buy all those things separately. Yeah. So there's two boxes. One is just for like the mech. You saw the, the big mech one, right? Mm -hmm. The robot. Um, yeah. That one is that's one. And then the other one is basically everything else you saw. OK, because so. what I expected having seen this was that it was going to be some sort of like, OK, buy a labia. And then you can buy these little cardboard booster packs or whatever that you can then. So like uh, this is only for Nintendo labia. And it's like a little thing of cardboard that you could then buy and print out. Um, maybe maybe that's the direction they're going in. Maybe <laughs> I can't call it the actual name. It's got to be a Nintendo <laughs> labia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So so buy this cardboard thing. Shape it out, shove it in your labia. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> but no, like I, I was thinking about like what are the what are the merchandising, uh, the licensing sort of deals that they can make here. What like when um, the next Avengers film comes out and there's like a Captain America fucking labia thing, <laughs> so you can use his, his labia, like have a little shield or something that you can put on and swing around, and now you're doing Captain America shit. Yeah, or like um. Uh, <laughs> someone in your chat room just broke me <laughs> study the new nintendo labia to find the new nintendo clitoris <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> uh the other thing that i thought was really really interesting about this um that uh rudism was he tweeted about this earlier because he makes all sorts of custom controllers and oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's actually, like, there actually is kind of a dev kit for this thing. There's a way that you can make, like, your own custom controllers and stuff with it. And so, oh. yeah, like, he was he was showing there was, like, a, um, a little thing that where you, like, you have a pad of some kind. And you can, like, set sensor points or something on it. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I don't build controllers. I don't really know what I'm looking at. But I trust that Rudism knows what building a controller looks like because that's what he fucking does. Yeah. So, um, aside from, like, I don't need develops video games or something like that but mostly he makes controllers on twitch um and so i was looking at this and i was like wait hang on and i'm like remembering back to when i was just waking up this morning and like sitting on the john reading the like random like here are some news articles that you might be interested in sort of thing on my phone because that's all i'm capable of at that time of day <laughs> um and there was an article i saw i think it was on kotaku or something no it was on the verge uh-huh i uh, and there is a set of hackers that are actually really, really close to completely unlocking the Nintendo Switch so that you can use and like cu install custom like OS and stuff on it. Mm -hmm. The combination of those two things leads to all sorts of crazy like, yes, how would you like to have a little computer that you can build into whatever you want it to be? Yeah, that, I mean, that I think is exciting. It's definitely powerful enough to be a netbook uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, just, just getting it unlocked to the point where you could sideload things would be amazing because then we could have things like Rainway app, which lets you stream basically whatever on your PC to, uh, your mobile devices or a web browser. Um, like things like that would be obviously massive homebrew, uh, which yeah. is if you have a Wii or a Wii U, I'm not sure about the Wii U, but definitely on the Wii, 
uh, homebrew basically unlocks fucking everything <laughs> for yeah. your for your Wii. It turns your Wii into a Plex or turns it into uh, an emulator or whatever the fuck you want. It's great. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff I'm hoping comes soon with the side loading thing. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of things people come up with uh, because a lot of it is based off of just putting the controller on something and letting and using its sensors to send a signal. It's not that different from how VR handles wands, you know, um, or how the Wii <laughs> handles the <laughs> Wii modes, you know. Um, actually, it's a little bit different from that because it doesn't use an IR signal. It actually uses the in-game uh, or the actual in-device uh, gyro sensors. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of possible. There's a lot of uh, potential there for them to do like a ton of you know weird stuff. Uh, but even if they don't, even if it doesn't go anywhere, Nintendo still made a fucking product made out of exclusively cardboard and string and they're going to sell a ton of them. Yeah. Fucking ton of them. 420 (laughs) release date. 420. Oh, of course. Of course. course Because you know that's how how they came up with this thing, right? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) They were all sitting around fucking blazed out of their minds. And they were like, yo... There's a lot of like boxes over there. <laughs> what if we like chopped all those up and put a switch in it? <laughs> <laughs> and Miyamoto's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's That's that one. Meme their, their products, by the way. There's, a, there's that meme. Uh, it has got him like holding up his arms in like an X, and it shows in the next panel, it says it shows loot boxes. And then it shows him like kind of give him the thumbs up. And in the next panel, it shows cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be really interesting, man. Like it's just it's such a practical and simple thing that's getting so much attention that even if even if you know, if you're like, wow, like uh, I think Chisel's first response was, hey, if you wait a little bit, I'll give you one for half off. He's like going <laughs> to dumpster dive some cardboard or something like that and then make one for, for half the price. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, like, even if you're on that side of the fence from it, like you have to respect the fact that everyone is going to be talking about it. Yeah. It's just a thing that people are going to talk right now. And then, of course, when it launches, it's going to be fucking everywhere. I wonder how proprietary, like if there's anything super proprietary about this cardboard or if there's just going to be bootleg versions <laughs> of this thing. Proprietary cardboard. <laughs> well, like if it has some sort of like if they if they put some sort of circuitry on it and like a sticker or something like if they made it oh, more like complicated. a holographic sticker kind of thing. Yeah. Or oh, if it's literally yeah. just you need the instructions and you need some cardboard that someone has cut out. In which case, there's going to be some dude immediately who's like, yo, I got a whole bunch of Amazon boxes. I'm going to buy one of these things and I'm going to trace around it with a fucking exacto knife or something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's if it's something that we can see, then it can be replicated, which means there's going to be the the knockoff brand on eBay or something or Amazon or Mad Cats is going to have Mad Cats cardboard like line of products <laughs> for you to go and uh, <laughs> get. They're gonna, we're going to see uh, cardboard printers starting to pick up in sales soon, right? Surely that will happen. <laughs> yeah. Walk up outside of GameStop, some dude in a trench coat, like, yo, you want to buy some labia? <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking of labia. Hmm. By which I mean, speaking of, hang on, where can I go with this? By which I mean, speaking of private organs, by which I mean, speaking of the human body, by which I mean, wait, 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 I'm making a connection here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's my best drum roll. Oh. That was pretty good, drum roll. That, was, that wasn't bad. By which I mean a thing that's slowly decomposing. So they are billions is pretty oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's, there's been two things all over uh, <laughs> all over Twitch lately. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about another one of them here in a second. 
But I want to I want to I want to mention they are billions real quick because I didn't think people still played real time strategy games <laughs> like I I'm going to be completely honest, and I say that as someone who works at Blizzard Entertainment, makers of the most popular real time strategy games ever. Um, I I thought that that uh, that that genre was like slowly, slowly like it just not currently in favor, basically. It was really super popular, um, like what, five or six years ago when StarCraft 2 came out. Um, it was uh, really super popular like 10 years prior to that. And there's a cat on my desk right now. Um, yeah. Meow. Um, the cat is now pushing my microphone around. This is excellent. Good radio right now. Well, what, they, what you do is you take two things that people don't give a shit about anymore and you put them together one of them obviously rts the other is zombies Mm. and you put them together and suddenly you have a smash hit yeah (laughs) like it's funny like i've had so many people they're like oh man you should play they are billions like you you would love it and I'm like, what? I, I, I've seen pictures of it, but like, like I've seen like some like promo promo stuff. So I didn't even see the GUI. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, and then I, I went and I pulled up a video and I watched. I was like, this motherfucker is Starcraft mod. Like, <laughs> like, as a matter of fact, there are, there's already been like a Starcraft map that was basically this, mm-hmm. you know, where you just it was a survival mode or whatever, just in yeah. the middle and you just fend off things <clears throat> and left. So- Left to die, I think yeah. it was called. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so I'm like, wh- why? Why would people? First off, I, I the last time I like hardcore hit any kind of RTS, I was like 16 years old or 17. <laughs> like, and that's like half my life ago plus. So it's like that was the last time I really was into RTS. Uh, and it's it, so it's like I don't. I, I I see. I watch some people. I watch Wastes play a space play it a bunch. And like he's fairly good at it. And so like watching him play, it's kind of you get a good idea. It's like, OK, yeah, it's it's a fucking RTS. I even showed my wife. OK, Jen, she only gets gaming stuff peripherally, like from me, like it's always by proxy, you know, uh, because she doesn't outside of bubble bitch that she plays on her phone. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't pay attention to. And that's what she calls it. Uh, okay, she doesn't good. pay attention to uh, general gaming stuff. Right. I, I pull up a video today. I'm watching the way space. Video. I pull it up. And I was like, babe, what was I was like, babe, this is a game. Everyone's trying to get me to play. And she's like, is that Starcraft? And I was just like, fuck it. Hey. Yeah, no, it's not. Mm. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's looks, it looks cool. It look, it looks like interesting and I guess, but it's just doesn't, I, I don't understand why it's taking off other than they found a way to rejuvenate and kind of bring back the whole RTS thing by combining it with something else that is very, uh, that's already been accepted, like recently uh, kind of a, an accepted thing, recently compared to like when RTS came out, right? <clears throat> Zombies, that is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, So I've played a, a fair amount of it. Um, Olivia has played a shit ton of it. And when yeah. Olivia plays a shit ton of a video game, you know it's good. Because... Normally she'll play a game for like uh, a few hours maybe and then be like, okay, yeah, I've gotten I've gotten what I want out of this and she'll move on and play something else. Sure. Um, but when she really likes a game, she has very good taste in video games. Um, it's biased. Well, yes, this is true. <laughs> but, um, so the important thing, this, this is what, it actually kind of boggles my mind a little bit that she likes this game because she doesn't have a lot of patience for games that don't explain themselves very well mm-hmm. um and when, when she talks about it, the, the general like um attitude and mindset there is well i could spend the several hours to learn how to play this video game in a completely non-intuitive manner or i could do anything else with that amount of time i'd rather do something else with that amount of time because you know she only has so much time to play video games sure yeah um <clears throat> some like i feel very much the same way like if Half the reason that I rage quit Fortnite was because I was like, I don't fucking care about learning what all this shit I just unlocked is. I don't want to spend the next hour reading tooltips. I want to play a video game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I totally get that. But 
right now, the way it is in early access, they are billions is one of the most like opaque gaming experiences that's out there right now. <laughs> like there's there's no tutorial. There's mm-hmm. no anything that tells you what you do. You literally like you push start game. It pops up with a thing that says, hey, do you want to do it on a large map or a small map? Do you want to do it with a lot of turns or no, excuse me. Do you want to do it? How many turns do you want to do it with? And uh, what map do you want to do it on? There's only one option. So how many turns do you want it to be? Oh, and the other one's like, how many, how strong do you want the zombies to be or something like that? Okay. Um, like overall difficulty setting, I guess. And it doesn't really explain very well why the turns is important. Um, but it, the turn, it basically boils down to the longer the game goes on, the harder it gets. So if you do one with more turns, it's more difficult. Mm, okay. Although actually, now that I think about it, I may have that backwards. It may be that it compresses <laughs> all the zombies into fewer turns, and so fewer turns is more difficult. See, okay. I, I've played I've played this game for like twelve enough, hours. Enough, enough, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so yeah, it's like you you load into the game. There's no like first build one of these, then build one of these, then move over and build one of these things. Um. More days equals easier. Okay, yeah, I did have it backwards. Um, the the it's literally just here's here's your main building and some units. Crickets. <laughs> like, by the way, that's timer's it. already started. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. that's it. They're coming. <laughs> yeah, zombies are coming. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. And so you spend your first like fifty rounds through this thing, just figuring out what the ev- what even the things are. <laughs> like, just figuring out. How does this game even work? What what are what are even the things that I can build? What are the the different units that exist? What do the units do? Because you really can't even tell what they do until you make one and mm-hmm. tell it to go attack zombies. And you're like, oh shit! Well, that was a sniper, and it just went in and attacked five zombies and died. Shit! That was a bad idea. All right. <laughs> um, but it's it's they've really managed to capture that sort of roguelike sense of. Well, next time I'll go again and I'll do better this time. Right? Like the sort of like Yeah, I just died and the game is over. Hmm. But I can start a new game. That's an option. And that goes really well. And it's the sort of thing like it actually kind of concerns me a little bit because I know that they're planning like even before they took off. They mm-hmm. were like, "Yeah, it's early access. This is what we've got in right now." Um, but there's a whole lot of other stuff coming later on, like a full single player campaign, yada yada yada, etc. Um and I'm actually really worried that over the course of developing the content they were originally planning for this game, they will ruin this game <laughs> because oh, it's like it's fine the way it is. It's not. It, I, I think it needs it needs stuff for sure. It needs a tutorial yeah. um, or at least some way that you can look through tech trees and be like, here's how this stuff actually works. Um, it needs some sort of it needs a little bit more uh, guidance um, and it could use more modes than just the standard sit there and hold out forever sort of thing. Mm hmm. I'm just like it it feels slightly like when they when they put it out, they were like, all right, uh, we need to release something for early access so we can start making money so that we can continue funding this thing. Here it is. And then it just took off and they need to look at what people are really excited about right now because it's it's surprising. I would not be I, w- I would I would guess that it's probably surprising to the development team how much it's took off, uh, how much it's taken off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Um and now, now they have to figure out that I, that's gonna be very difficult, right? Because like, yeah. what a, you know this. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of feedback that that a developer uh, dev studio gets is that they're not listening to feedback. <laughs> <laughs> when a lot of times they are, they're just maybe not listening to your feedback, or there's a reason why your feedback was not necessarily taken as. And, and, and you know implemented um and so they have a product now that wildly popular will probably continue to gain uh traction for at least another couple weeks or so right just kind of think of the general attrition rate of games right um and then you know whatever their like their 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 taper off looks like you know they could still have you know thousands of people playing a day you know, versus I don't know how many people are playing right now. Let's just say ten thousand. You basically dropped down to like a tenth. So, 
okay, those first people got in. Did they leave because they're over the game? Did they leave because they couldn't figure it out? Did they leave because, you know, uh, whatever? Like, and then the, the people that are still playing, why are they playing? What do they like about it? What would they like to see? Well, how can we get those other people back? You know, and they're trying to sift through feedback and everything. And then like, then they run into that problem of like, well, let's try to get a, a, a good list of things that we can actually, actually implement that's reasonable. Uh, you know, like not multiplayer or something because you can <laughs> plug that in. Uh, and, you know, just basically put together a list and figure out exactly what what that that long-term community is going to want uh, and how to also get back some of those um, those players that left initially. Yeah, that's, I don't envy that at all. Fuck that. Yeah. Well, and it, it could even mean things like reprioritizing content they were already planning. Like, say they were planning on eventually adding a... Um, single player campaign but they were also planning on adding like multiplayer cooperative mode or something so that you could have two people building the base at the same time and working together or something like that and they were like initially they sat down and they said okay no the single player campaign is what's going to really hook people about this game so that's what we need to get to we'll come out with this like randomly generated whatever it is side side thing first but this is what we're really after um and then people really fucking loved the randomly generated like side things so they had to sit back and go okay shit uh let's think about this maybe we maybe we push that back in development they still develop the same title at the end of the day sure for the end of the development cycle they could develop the entire title in a day we wouldn't be having this conversation um but maybe they decide to to focus on other things first and that's the sort of thing like especially it's one of the 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 still the big problems to solve with early access in terms of marketing is how do you keep people interested in your game? And I think the the order that they develop things in is actually a big part of that. If you're coming out with stuff that keeps your current player base, uh, you, you almost have to like, you come out with game with mode A, and then instead of jumping over to mode G immediately, you go mode A, then mode A.5, which is the same, but a little bit different. And you just sort of gradually expand what the players are, are getting access to rather than throwing them something completely different at them right away. Unless you're Fortnite, in which case you do you you go completely different than what you already have and suddenly become massively popular. <laughs> I know, man. That game just turned turned around like so hard. I couldn't believe oh, man. it. They're they're really, really <laughs> smart. Like they're I even said when I was ranting around the about the original version of the game that these are clearly very, very smart developers. Um and they've they've done the very smart thing, which is shit. People don't like people don't like our game. People are getting upset about our game. Obviously, there's lots of people who do like the base version of Fortnite, but they were like, shit. What can we do? What can we do? Oh, you know what people like? PUBG. Let's just be PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> we have the assets. Let's just yeah. do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Yeah. Uh. So speaking of PUBG. Uh, this is interesting. Tencent somehow managed to get the Chinese police. My cat's making noises. The Chinese police to arrest over 120 people who were cheating in in PUBG. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so they did arrest over 120. Yeah. Uh, people uh, and. Not like, like they're they're filing charges against. No, they've arrested. Yeah, uh, I'm not pretending to know how their legal system works, but I'm pretty sure I know what it means to be arrested. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure that's probably the same universally. You're not gonna you're not going home tonight. <laughs> like that's what it means to be arrested, or you know you got to go to the station and fill out some paperwork or something. Um, I can't believe this happened. Yeah, so like I I you know I I I play a lot of games and. Occasionally I come across somebody that's that's cheating and it's just like, wow, fuck that guy. You know, uh, I know that it happens a lot in PUBG. I've seen tons of videos ever since they put that replay system in. Um, everyone's been posting like all these like crazy things that are happening. It's just like, wow, like that, like this person is just like, you know, hundreds of yards away and just kind of snap firing like through walls to try to hit people that they can't even see. But yet they're targeting them almost directly, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Like the, the obviously there's a there's a a, a cheating problem. But arrests, man, like actually arresting people, that just, that sounds like some Black Mirror shit, you know, like you're yeah. cheating in a video game, you're giving yourself an edge and then Tencent, which is a very, obviously a very large uh, holdings company. They have a lot of money. Uh, 
comes after you. And, you know, the reason they're doing it is because they want to basically clean things up before launch because, you know, if, if everybody gets in the game and fucking everyone's cheating, then no one's going to play that game after the first, like, day. And yeah. that's going to suck. So they basically want to clean everything up so that they could have a successful launch, minimize the amount of cheaters that there are, and then go from there. But yeah, it hasn't, kills- it hasn't actually launched in, in China yet. Right, uh, yeah. But <clears throat> what's, what's weird to me is... Are you telling me that 120 people would actually stop 10 cents launch from being successful? 120 people when millions of people play this game every day. I just I just don't see that so, as being reasonable. The really really important fact here is that these they're not they're not arresting people who were they're not just arresting people who were cheating these are 120 people uh who are being accused of creating the cheats creating the cheaters okay okay yeah Sorry. so if they can if they can actually arrest the people who are creating the cheats then uh, you're right i i totally a, overlooked that part yeah yeah like a that means that now there's 120 people who can't update their cheats and just the way the way that sort of works it tends to be like Developer creates game. Uh, cheater creates cheat. Developer updates game. Yeah. Cheater has to update cheat to work with new version of game, and the just cycle goes back and forth. Um, usually, I, uh, um, so if if they're actually able to arrest everyone who's making a cheat for this game, and then they release a two megabyte patch, then they've ended cheating. That's true. Game, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. The the most important thing about this, though, is that they actually managed to do this in the first place, because yeah. for the longest, 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 longest time, there have been two main locations that all of the cheats come out of. One is Russia. I haven't been able to figure out how to do anything about that yet. The other one is China. Like mm-hmm. the vast majority of cheats are either developed by people who are from those countries or um, have found a way to make themselves either they have either moved to those countries or hosted all of the relevant information and stayed separate from it themselves or something. They, they, they use those countries as a holding ground for their cheats. And uh, I don't, I don't fully know how all that works, but yeah, um, they basically, they've somehow decided uh, gotten, they've used it as a loophole basically. Yeah. Um, so if they, if, if Tencent has actually figured out a way and it, to be clear, they've been arrested. They haven't been convicted at this point. Sure. Yeah. So they're, they're in prison or something. Uh, I assume but uh they they've only been uh accused um so if they've actually found a way to actually take out cheaters from china then that's a huge fucking deal not just for pubg but for every game that has cheaters in it yeah it's true and they and these things are <laughs> like <clears throat> uh there is a time i got a cheat for survivor games right a sanctioned cheat uh, for Survivor Games um, in DayZ. And yeah, it's a whole nother fucking story. Uh, and I remember being on the forums and being like, and just seeing like, I can't remember what the name of the forums was, but basically it was like, they had every popular game and every single like, and, and they had of course like different, you know, some of them had multiple um, cheats for them. And some of those is like, oh yeah, there's one cheat that'll basically do all of them because it circumvents you know, battle eye or something, you know? So it's like, well, you circumvent battle eye, then suddenly you can do whatever you want in any game. So this one thing will apply to everything. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like those things are, they are everywhere. And every time there's a fix, they turn right around and they make another, you know, they do an update to circumvent that fix. And yeah. And yeah. they are inevitably <laughs> faster at it than the people developing the game. Mm-hmm. Because the development pipeline for a game is do all this other work and also this cheat thing can fit into this patch. Whereas the patch for the cheat is just make the cheat work again. Yeah. And, and usually that's just a matter of going, okay, that hex code changed to that hex code. Done. Yep. So. No, this is this is a big deal. Um, we've seen other similar things in the last like year or so, like different legal battles going on against cheat makers. Some have been losses. Some have been wins. Um, if I remember correctly, actually, I wasn't re- involved in it at all, but I believe that Blizzard finally won the uh, 
the legal battle against oh. uh, one of the the cheat makers. I don't I don't remember if that's actually true or not. I know that they pulled out and they gave up and pulled out. Um, I don't remember exactly what the specifics of it were. Maybe maybe we beat them through some other means. Um, but yeah, uh, that's actually a big deal. Legal case against Overwatch and Warcraft cheat bot. Yeah, there we go. That's, yeah, April last year. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is this is good news for the good guys. Um, if you like to cheat in video games, then it's bad news for you. But I don't care. <laughs> Tencent <laughs> is coming for you. <laughs> is, they're gonna, they're eventually they're gonna run out of uh, of cheat makers to arrest, and they're just gonna have to start turning on the cheaters. That's right. <laughs> Even though there's no cheats left. <laughs> yeah. uh, one other thing that we should probably talk about before we get to our announcement. That we need to make. Sure. Fucking VR chat. <laughs> oh man. I'm like, <clears throat> so on the one hand, so, okay. I don't, I, I feel like a good number of people know what VR chat is at this point. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot more people are aware of the memes coming out of fucking VR chat. <laughs> Which is making them aware of, yeah, <laughs> of yeah, the, exactly, the existence. And, yeah, yeah. Have yeah, you so, have you tried it? You have a. Do you have a means to try it? I have a so, I believe so technically, but I haven't gotten around to trying it yet. Mm -hmm. I have a PSVR, and there is supposedly a way to use some third-party software to make a PSVR work on a PC. Right. Yeah. Um, and interact it uh, with Steam VR. Uh, I just haven't actually tried setting it up yet. Mm. Um, but, ooh, that actually reminded me of a different thing that I want to mention here in a second. Um, but like, <laughs> I don't know. I watched the original like "Do You Know the Way" video, yeah. <laughs> and like I immediately Cluck footers, man. Cluck footers, man. Yeah, <laughs> I immediately like. I quote tweeted that on YouTube <laughs> or on, on YouTube. <laughs> Fuck no, not on YouTube. <laughs> I, I quote tweeted that on, on Twitter. In, incidentally, that's, that's where a tweet comes from. Mm. And I uh, just put in quotations. Hey, Laura, why haven't you tried VR chat yet? And it was just a link to that video. <laughs> <because> <laughs> like, I don't know. Like it's the sort of game that for me, like I, I get why people are into it. I actually know a lot of the um, uh, RP streamers have been getting into it as well, because if you find a room that isn't full of Ugandan knuckles, then you can apparently get like some decent actual like RP going on in VR because it's VR. That's kind of a perfect like RP is perfect for it's VR. It's so perfect, dude. Yeah. Like you should you should do it. Mm. Uh, I've done it. Um, I wonder if I could find a way to get my <clears throat> GTA character into VR chat. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, if, I'm certain. I'm certain you can like get a get a model made or get an exploit or something. Um, oh, man, there has to be a way to do that. So I could just <clears throat> walk around his legs in VR chat. Do wait. Have you seen the Darnell video? I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, the, that's legit, dude. It's so fucking weird, like having his hands. You know? <laughs> it's so fucking weird, like moving. And it's funny because, you know, when you when you know, when you play a character and you know this when you play a character, you there's more to him than just what like people see. Like you have like this, the mannerisms and there's mannerisms associated with them that you don't necessarily uh, vocalize. Right. That people don't necessarily hear. Because, you know, maybe they just hear the voice or something, right? Uh, and this truth is also for, you know, Darnell. Um, and when you're in there and, 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 and you're talking, like, I noticed that, you know, you, you, you kind of, you get to act out the character. So, like, even in his hand motions and everything and the way that he moves, that's not how I talk. You know, like, it's not, that's how I imagine Darnell talks. Mm. You know, the way he moves his hands, the way he points you know, the, the, the things that he does, you know, like that's how he moves. And so it's really like this, it's, it's really an actually like a strangely immersive experience. And it's like, wow, like you, this character started off as just a voice in my head and a way that I dealt with certain situations, like 
fucking a decade plus ago, right? Two almost two decades ago. And 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 now it's like I'm able to embody that character. And it's so fucking weird and so fucking cool. Mm. Like it's so cool just to get in there and you know, uh, and just like you, you end up like talking to people and <clears throat> and by talking to people, which is another interesting thing, and which you'll you'll I, I'm sure that you'll find out with like legs or something. Um, when you talk to people that maybe you don't have any kind of like outside connection with, so you don't really know what their rhythm is or their flow. Like now you are on the fly creating new ways for your character to mm. interact with other people. Um, not just on a vocal level, also like on a physical level, you know, as well. Um, and so you end up becoming more and more of that character and it's fucking scary, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I totally like, cause, um, so when I, when I'm RPing as an NPC, I basically always like, unless, unless it's like I'm DMing a campaign and I know that this NPC is going to exist for 10 seconds because it's a random passerby that you're never going to talk to again unless you're you fucking guys in which case you'll probably spend the next six months coming out with this guy um, <laughs> but um, I, thought I was like profit or something or le- oh, legs legs yeah. fucking legs yeah that's right yeah like like legs the the character i have that people are excited about was literally someone that i was just like you know what this goblin character that i'm really interested in he he needs a weird sidekick. All right, I'm going to make up a fucking half orc, call him legs. Sure, why not? And then you guys were like, okay, fuck you, Mr. Goblin Man. Legs, we want to talk to you all the time. I'm like, oh shit, all right. Um, but anyway, like I will almost all like when I'm whenever I'm making a character uh for uh in-game RP for um uh D D, whatever, I'll always always make sure that I make up a fake voice for them. Uh-huh. because that's sort of how i get into character it's the same as like um how i uh like uh someone like christian slater i can imagine when he's playing mr robot he has to put the hat on and then once he's got the hat on he's got the glasses kind of hunches over a little bit kind of hunches over a little yeah. bit does the 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 weird like smile thing where his mouth is open like just a little <laughs> bit the entire time you know you know what i mean right like yeah, that's just his, yeah. his general resting facial expression yeah. is different from christian slater's general resting facial expression mm-hmm. once you get into that now you're that character and that you've convinced your brain that you're a different person yeah. that's what i do with the with the voices is as soon as i as soon as i, I become legs then they you know it, 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 it like changes the way that i talk <laughs> and everything because that's that's just how that works um, and i've like I've had weekends when I was playing um, Father Teller in Ark a while back um, on Prime RP. I spent like an entire weekend, like three day weekend playing Father Teller um, and Olivia wasn't around. So the only words I spoke the entire weekend were as Father Teller. And I got into work on like uh, Monday morning Uh and I walked into a meeting and I was like, good morning. (laughs) <laughs> how y'all do today how y'all do and i was today. like shit <laughs> hang on remember who i am for a second hold on wait a um, second wait a second yeah reconfigure reconfigure <laughs> um like i'm it's the sort of thing like i'm actually slightly worried that if i was in vr chat like not only am i sounding like legs the entire time but i'm moving around like legs like he's a he's gonna be a guy who's got a bit more of a like i don't know he's a just a beefy dude so he's gonna yeah. be a little bit more um i guess confident in his stride than i am okay um like he, he's gonna be a big guy who just he knows that he's a big guy and he moves around like he's a big guy mm-hmm. so if i'm in uh if i'm in vr chat like moving my arms around like yeah whatever like I'm i'm gonna move my arms differently in that and then I'll get out of that and I'll just be a different person at this point. I've successfully rewritten my brain. I am now just legs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Develop a multi- multiple personality of disorder. All characters that you end up getting stuck with. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the dumb one. Fucking legs. Very useful. <laughs> Alter ego. Yeah. He's not even strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, I just, for reasons unclear, just gain on another hundred pounds of muscle <laughs> <laughs> start working out man yeah Got twice in the head vr chat is uh there's a lot of there's a lot of dead air which is one of the reasons why i don't really like like streaming it because there's a lot of awkward dead air and like when you see highlights it's like when you watch a five minute highlight video it's that was an hour to get those 
Uh, mm. It's just a lot of dead air. Yeah. And sometimes you sit down, you have a great conversation with somebody and then it's over in like five minutes because they go do something else. Um, but it's still like, you know, you, you just, people just come together and do, I mean, I was, I was fucking sitting in a, in that, you know, there's like the house, right? The house party, uh, uh, room, I guess you call it instance. And, uh, I was sitting in on the couch or one of the chair in the living room. And there was a bunch of people walking around and here comes fucking slash, right? Somebody dressed as slash playing a guitar over his mic. And then on the other side is fucking Kurt Cobain. <laughs> playing a fucking guitar too and then the slash dude was talking shit to the kurt cobain guy he was like oh well i actually play guitar man like 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 the guy was playing guitar but it's not as well i guess like he was just and they're just fucking sitting there just just like exchanging shit and i was just like this is awesome man like yeah it's i mean it's a bit it's a bit overrun with uh with uh uh with anime shit weeb shit if you will uh yeah like so much so that it's funny. Like a lot of people don't recognize uh, the World of Warcraft character, the Darnell. You know, uh, I've been called an undead shaman. Uh, <laughs> somehow you fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I uh, just today I was actually called a uh, what do you call me? A Warcraft zombie. <laughs> like it's just. It, there's just it's just, it's just a different group of people there and it's so it's yeah bone man that was the other one bone man bone man show yeah me the, show me the way <laughs> bone um, man show me the way <laughs> uh but the thing is like it's it's infinite what you could do people make custom rooms custom instances so you can go into apparently there is a stormwind one which i can't wait to find um and given the way that they are able to import models like you just basically use unity well it's like well you could probably just build a fucking room in Unity and then just put it up or mm. export any other thing. I'm sure there's probably a, a Unity based Stormwind, you know, replica. Just put that shit in fucking in, in VR chat and people go nuts over it. Like, yeah, the it's VR chat is VR chat has created something that is basically infinite uh, and scary at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Very scary at the same yeah. time. I'm really interested, like, because one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, um, especially having been getting more involved in the RP streaming lately. Um, it was actually something that you said a while ago when you first introduced me to GTA RP. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Why would I watch this? Um, you were like, this is like television for people that grew up on Twitch. And like, that's something that the more I think about, it, it's like, okay, yeah, actually this is sort of like, like if I'm watching a sitcom, if I'm watching Parks and Rec mm -hmm. and I decide I really like Andy Dwyer and I kind of don't give a shit about Leslie Nope. In Parks and Rec, I mean, you still have to deal with all the Leslie Nope all the time because, and I, I, I'm not, I actually like Leslie Nope as a character, but I'm just for sake of argument, if you're the person who doesn't like Leslie Nope, but you do like Andy Dwyer, then you're going to be watching Leslie, Leslie Nope a whole bunch for the little glimpses of Andy Dwyer here and there. Mm -hmm. But if you take that sort of thing and apply it to a RP streamer, you can just watch what Andy Dwyer is up to all of the time. <laughs> you can, and sure, most of the time it's going to be that he's sitting on his couch in his underpants, but you can hang out and just wait and see if something interesting happens. Maybe uh, Tom comes over or something and they have a funny conversation and then Tom leaves, right? Like, yeah. this is the sort of thing that, that happens in that environment. And so thinking about VR chat and how you can plug basically anything into it, um, like, how far are we really? How far are we really from a point where we can have like an organization who has like 20 quote unquote actors or whatever um, who play different characters and everyone has like a general idea of what it's supposed to be. And there's some improvisation to it because it's all live, but there's a general sort of flow of this is what today's episode is like. Right. And you jump into VR chat, you all jump into VR chat, you go into an instance together somewhere and you're like, all right. So today's episode is that these five characters are doing this and these five characters are doing this and the other 10 characters are having a party over here. And one of those characters is going to come over here to this point. And you can just watch all of this happen from everybody's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just decide that you really don't like one of the characters, you watch somebody else. Or yeah. if one of the characters is being boring, you go and watch some watch something else like this is the sort of like, hang on, actually, this might be the future of television for a 
a generation that grew up on Twitch. It's like a choose your own adventure, but it's just choose yeah. your own like perspective. Yeah. You know, choose like which character you want to be or watch or see or whatever. Like see what they're up to. Uh, and that happens all times in shows, of course. You know, it's like someone's like, all right, especially in like, I think of like, like a police procedural, you know, it's like mm-hmm. you have the buddy cops, right? So it's like, uh, like Lucifer, you know? So it's like, okay, the, uh, the detective, she's going to go do this thing. And Lucifer is like, right, I'm going to go bang these chicks over here. Why you do that? It's like, well, I want to go see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't do that right now with regular TV. Yeah. So yeah. Like this, this kind of, you're right. Like with these like actors, these personalities, the actors are basically the personalities not talking about extracting them from Hollywood. We're talking about creating new uh, personalities and new uh, uh, characters that you can follow that are just, you know, homegrown basically. Um, yeah. 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 And like the, the sort of interesting conversations that come out of it, like uh, there's this sort of stereotypical water cooler discussion of, oh, man, did you see what happened on Game of Thrones last night? Oh, yeah, I've, I watched it. I can't believe that Daenerys spent an entire season standing around in whatever that place is called doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sucked, too. Anyway, um, where you've both had the same exact experience from this shared thing. But it's interesting, the sort of conversations that come up around the RP streams where it's like, um. Like my character right now is getting pulled into this weird sort of uh, uh, conflict between the cops and Securo Serve, where he wants to be a good boy, but no one in Securo Serve is a good boy, <laughs> and so he's <laughs> like, "Shit, hang on, what's going on here?" And the, for reasons that are related to his backstory that I haven't actually told anybody, um, he's like really, really worried about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also at the same time, the cops are like, "Hey, yo, you should totally be a cop." you're you're good at this security thing you should be a cop and so there's like this really interesting sort of like dilemma going on for this character right now huh. um that, that i think is cool as the person who's getting to play this character um you're living your own uh sitcom slash soap opera exactly yeah but what's really interesting is the conversations that that could that then come up elsewhere around it like Oh man, Freddie would be really mad about that. In fact, Freddie was saying this the other day. So the legs, you'd be super mad at legs if this happened. Um, and then, oh, and then we were listening to uh, um, Chief Mason and he was talking about this and so on. And so like you end up with your Twitch chat basically being unwatchable if you're streaming <laughs> because it's just a whole bunch of fucking spoilers for shit that you should know. Um, but like they're just talking back and forth like, oh my God, he's going to do this thing. And that's so crazy because Bayo did this the other day. And uh dazzler was doing this other thing and you know so on and so forth and oh granny's getting involved now oh god this is gonna be scary um oh shit he just came up on kiki chanel they've had some crazy shit going on today this is gonna be epic right now legs is getting him himself into some shit and he doesn't even know um and that's the sort of like that would take those water cooler discussions to like the next fucking level where someone's like yeah dude i was watching daenerys last night and it was a bit dull, but then all of a sudden, fucking, um, uh, shit, why can't I think of the character's name right now? The short dude. Uh, Prophet? No, no, I'm sorry. Not your, not your character. No, no, no. In, uh, in, uh, Game of Thrones. Fucking, um. Oh, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion Lannister. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Sorry. This is why I can't remember names ever. You get my short dudes mixed up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they sound so similar also. <laughs> they have the same goals, like, I think. Yeah. But like if you were if you were at a water cooler talking about, yeah, Daenerys was just sitting around in whatever it's called. And then this this random like Lannister showed up. Isn't that crazy? And then the other person was like, Oh shit, yeah, I was watching Tyrion. Man, he went through some shit to get there. You have no idea. And he had oh, to man. abandon his friend and everything the whole time. And like you yeah. were like, holy shit, wait, so that happened? Oh my god, this is so cool. So that's why he said this, or he came back and whatever. Yeah, yeah you connect all the dots with your friends. Man, that's such a cool concept. And it's totally it going there. And it's the thing is, it's completely doable. Yep. Like you were just if it's it happening uses, right now. It's crude, but it's happening right now. Yeah. Like it would be completely doable to create fuck maybe i shouldn't even say this maybe i should just find a way to do it um, <laughs> to create like these are my actors these are the models that were made for them i have hired someone to model like sets and so on uh-huh. like we're getting to like what if set designers were 3d modelers and they could just do whatever the fuck they wanted in a 3d model mm-hmm. that's <laughs> i mean that's it's funny that's actually how a lot of 3d artists start they they mm. do these environments these environment uh, artists that they do it in like unity and whatever and yeah they, that's directly transferable to this yeah 
it's it's really cool the potential for it i I really hope it goes that way because i think it'll be awesome and then in another five years i can be like yep i was totally right about that and that's gonna be your voice because that's a character that you played so often that yeah. now you can't not talk like that i'll have been <laughs> johnny dark side <laughs> attorney at law <laughs> yeah mr summers <laughs> <laughs> just nonstop. <laughs> Oh man, how funny would it be to have a character named Mr. Summer who uh, had the movie trailer voice? <laughs> He'd just be like, what's your name? Mr. Summer. <laughs> you have a soundboard that plays like yeah. tense music or something like that every time you say something that cuts off abruptly. <laughs> yeah. This summer, he is Mr. Summer. <laughs> In a world. In a world. <laughs> that would be a better name actually like ina world oh my I name's world yeah mm. that's in a world mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm gonna have to do this at some point um so speaking of great ideas mm -hmm. that are completely and totally awesome um and so we're gonna do them timestamp here Time, yeah, timestamp right here. Figure out, post this in the YouTube. In the YouTubes. Maybe we should talk about Nintendo Labia a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we have announcements. We have announcements that need announcing. Uh, so we've been talking for a while on this show primarily, but also, you know, making mention here and there that uh we were planning to start a new uh like video show like a old old school game breaker style video show with like webcams and uh and talking and stuff um we are really close to officially launching that i i i think that's an a bit of an exaggeration i think we're underselling it there i mean I, we, really we could close say, time wise we're really close time wise yeah yeah it's uh it's this month in fact it's next week in fact it's next that you already said that yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's uh um the 25th january 25th we're gonna have our first official uh episode of our new show um it took us a while to come up with a name for it it did not gonna lie <laughs> like <laughs> oh god where is the list of names oh no <laughs> <laughs> we could tell you all the idea all the names that it's not <laughs> or at least a few yeah. of them hang on you gotta find this list here oh and we went through all sorts of different uh like anagrams of the one that we ended up going with too mm-hmm so like we we were we were throwing around ideas like something and tin foil like mm -hmm. tacos in tin foil or something. I don't know. Tin foil TV. Yeah. Don't ask why. We had to get the dumb ideas out of the way first yeah. to make way for the good ideas. Kind of like how YouTube yeah. is doing with partners. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's fucking, fucking rip. <laughs> fucking rip. <laughs> Um, <laughs> please tell me what was the tinfoil acronym supposed to be I don't even remember I think the idea was what if we made up an acronym that was <laughs> spelled tinfoil <laughs> no idea what it was going to be uh, um, we we thought about like S-A-L-T I, I think that was the same like I don't know what this is an acronym for but what if we made an acronym that was SALT um, downtime was one we came up with mm-hmm <laughs> basic internet talk show bits <laughs> oh god that's right yeah bits so we we went through all the bad ideas first because that's how like i guess um tip for people who are planning to name things come up with all the bad ideas write them down so that the bad is removed from your brain at that point it's been written down then you can get onto the good ideas a little bit later um, I can't wait to tell them the actual name so they can say it's the dumbest one on the list. Yeah. 
<laughs> should, should we read off some of the anagrams of it that we came up with for reasons I don't remember? Uh, we were going to like use them in the show, or I guess, or something? Yeah, sure. I think we were coming up with ag- anagrams because we were like, let's find a way to tease the name of it. And then we didn't end up doing that because I'm bad at marketing. Features uh, no mint. <laughs> like, there's no mint whatsoever in this show. It features no mint. Infernos mutate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what they in, mutate into, but all right. My 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 favorite. Th- I mean, then there's these like, the variations. Funniest or and then mate, meet, <laughs> team, ream, mate, tame. Uh, it, basically every yeah. every other combination of those you could think of. Yeah, manifest our net. That one got particularly poignant around the uh, <laughs> Matt, yes, net neutrality. Stuff. Our net was good. Yeah, uh, fortune's inmate was the one that I really liked. Yeah. I really like that one. We may end up having to use that for something else. It'll be our uh, LLC name or something <laughs> or another but show. I think I think part of the reason why we really like Fortune's Inmate, though, is because of the actual name of the show. Yeah, because it kind of ties into like, OK, there's the the there's the term fame and fortune, right? Uh huh. And so if fame went to jail, its inmate would probably be fortune mm. so therefore fortune's inmate would be fame it's perfect so the name of our new podcast which starts first show was going to be live um i believe we're aiming for 8 p.m pacific time mm-hmm. uh next week uh thursday next week so that's going to be the 25th of january 8 p.m pacific time uh 11 p.m eastern time it's sometime entirely too early for you to be awake in europe um <laughs> Sorry, I work a full-time job. That's what we got to do. Um, do you want to say it? Uh, sure. Okay. Do you Infamous Tenter. No, I'm just kidding. That was the, one <laughs> <laughs> the, the show's name is Internet Famous. Yeah. Internet Famous. Q, Q applause. Q applause. Q applause. Yeah. Q applause. I should have like... Had like a teaser of the intro music or something to uh, (laughs) to play here real quick. (laughs) Um, But yeah, the show is called Internet Famous. um, Because we're narcissistic or something. I don't know. Um, It'll be debuting next week, like I was saying. Um, There's something else I was going to say about it. It's going to have three people. Yes. the third host will be a surprise mm-hmm. every week. Yep. <laughs> um, the show is built around having three people. That's kind of the point of the show. Um, and the I, I can't wait for you guys to see the assets that Josh put together for this because it. I'm looking at it right now because we're doing on the back end. This is why Josh is not streaming. We're doing a dry run of the show itself, kind of testing everything to make sure it yeah. works. And visually, it looks fucking awesome. You guys have been listening to the test pilot episode of Internet Famous this entire time. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? Yeah, there's it's going to be very close to what we do at DigiWho. uh, But we're going to it's we're going to have to run a tighter ship. Like we can't have. Uh, we're not going to do 90 minute shows or two hour shows unless it's like a special or something. Um, because we want to keep it concise. Uh, so we're, ge- we're aiming at an hour. Um, some of the game breaker things obviously bleed over into this, you know, keeping the shows kind of like moving and everything. Um, the topics are not going to be deviate that far from digi who, uh, yeah, no. we do over the course of the past 80, 90 episodes over the past 10 years. Um, we have covered basically everything. And so we're totally okay with covering basically everything um but you know it's not a political podcast it's not a gaming podcast it's not a photography podcast it's not anything like that it's going to be a just basically general uh like tech gaming uh uh, culture related uh content yep um and part of what, what what we're trying to do with the third host as well is always make sure that there is a a really solid reason for them to be there 
either just it, like that could just be because it's a it's a name that people recognize and want to hear their their thoughts on stuff um it could be that um maybe there's a some sort of thing that they're doing soon that it, they want to be able to call out and so we can talk about that if that's newsworthy um uh, we we want to make sure that the host on the show is essentially like just another part of the features of the show the guest host that we have on the show is just another mm-hmm. part of the the features on the show um i'm really really excited about it i've been working on like mike said i've been working on making some various assets for it um for the past couple of months now um and i'm really like i'm i'm usually okay with the stuff i come up with i'm really happy <laughs> with the stuff that i came up with for this one there's a few things that i want to like update and change still and a couple of things i still need to do but i'm i'm really really excited about um where it's headed um and i i'm i'm super excited to be getting it's basically kind of the idea of taking everything that we learned from game breaker um and from and doing Digi-Hoo. the and digi who and uh weekly marmot bff report taking everything that we've learned over the past however many fucking years um and applying it to uh a new show made in in 2018 um and seeing what we can do with modern technology and the answers we can do actually kind of a fucking lot with modern technology yeah, like yeah the way we've got shit set up is actually i'm i'm really really pleased with it <clears throat> the um, show is going to be streamed on josh's channel uh mm-hmm. and the uh recording is going to go up on my channel and on my youtube channel and there's a reason for that um because I'm sending him on such a high quality feed, one of the biggest problems we ran into back in the Game Breaker days was the 8-bit lore, right? Yeah. Where the connection would just get get basically funneled down to nothing and then the, the signal would look like shit. Um, and so we don't want that. That still happens today. We don't want that. If I'm streaming, uh, I'm not sending a good at the best possible signal I could to Josh. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, we lose as a show. Um, and then we're going to host it on uh, my YouTube channel. That's where DigiWho has been. Uh, and so that just makes sense. We'll just throw it on there and, uh, and that'll be available to you. Right now, we do not have plans to distribute through iTunes because the current way that we do it, uh, it costs money. And there's a number of things that we're doing uh, that we're using, uh, platforms we're using to make this the best possible produce podcasts we can given what we have have available that costs us money every month so uh we're not going to be distributing it through anything else just yet uh yeah but we will probably revisit that in the future if that's uh, an option yeah yeah and like a month <laughs> it's the sort of thing that like if the show takes off and is super popular then maybe it eventually makes sense for us to put it on its own channels and stuff like we we reserve the right to grow basically mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what that boils down to um but super excited about it um cannot wait to have our first episode i think i have our first guest lined up um well okay i have a, i have a first guest lined up um we're doing some shuffling around in terms of schedules and so i'm not entirely sure which of the people i have available for our first episode <laughs> is uh, is going to be our first guest just yet mm-hmm. um but I think I know who it is, um, and I think uh, I think you guys are going to be super excited about it. Um, and if it is that person, then our second guest is also going to be pretty awesome. Um, and then we'll we'll go from there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fucking work to make this thing work, um, but I think it's worth it because yeah, it I think be good. I think we're going to have something really good come out of this. <clears throat> um, and there are not going to be four entirely unnecessary. 42 inch television sets immediately behind my head not yet not yet maybe not yet. maybe one day one day we'll get there i can have four giant televisions with a bezel the size of another television <laughs> <laughs> that was the best you could get man <laughs> yeah hmm. but i think it's gonna be really cool and i am super excited and like i say we launch next week oh and um we have our social media account set up also yes oh my god duh yeah so Gotta make sure to pitch pit, uh, pimp yeah. ourselves out as much follow as follow us on uh it's gonna be uh it's int famous int famous um on both twitter and on facebook mm-hmm. uh, i know nobody uses facebook but just in case you do it is there for you um 
Yeah. So that's where a lot of the official communication will come from. Clearly, if you follow Josh or I, you're going to hear about uh, you're going to hear about news regarding the um, uh, the show through those means. But that will be there specifically for those who just want to get information about Internet Famous. The new show starring. Also, con- congratulations, Mythic Griffin, on being our first Twitter follower that wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> He's the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. We actually have um, a really, really awesome intro song that I'm really happy with. Mm-hmm. Um, it started with some royalty free music. Um, I made some adjust- additional adjustments from there, and then I built out a full intro that I'm really happy with, but I'm also a massive <clears throat> troll. So that's that's why I'm really happy with it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Not going to lie, there's a very real chance that I play that song during the countdown to the first please, episode. Please, do. God damn it. <laughs> um... But yeah, super, super stoked um, and glad to finally be at a point where we can really start talking about it because we're so close to actually having it go live. Yep. And. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the reason that I'm not streaming DigiHue tonight and instead just hosting Mike is because I've been testing our scene transitions this entire time. And it looks great. I'm super stoked about it. A lot of people don't realize this, like. Um, for most of Game Breaker, we could not tell when we were live or not and we Mm -hmm. couldn't hear videos that were being played and so on so like we we didn't see any we didn't see what was being broadcast for the longest time unless we like had the stream up on another monitor but even then it would be super delayed especially back then it was like a 30 second delay we used to point the webcam at the monitor preview yes so that you could see it like imagine looking at a shitty skype feed or or whatever feed whatever platform we're using that is a webcam pointed at a monitor like sitting on the desk at an angle Fuck it. <laughs> yeah it was ingenuity is what that was we made it work <clears throat> and now we don't have to rely on those kinds of things now i could see we and our guests can see uh, mm-hmm. everything that uh that is going to be played and hear it uh we know when we're on camera so we know when we could pick our nose or scratch our nuts or whatever and yeah uh, it's, of- it's good yep <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, that, that was that was so I could scratch mine, not so that <laughs> oh that wasn't what I was aiming for there. You guys missed that. I just scratched my nuts. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, gonna be gonna be super awesome. Really, really stoked to uh, to get back into the the video podcasting game. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out. Uh, we're gonna be live on my Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Devil on on uh, the twenty fifth at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you don't catch it live, you'll be able to catch the VOD um, pretty soon thereafter. Uh, we're hoping that it doesn't take long for me to send that info over to Mike and yeah. send that thing over to Mike and get that all taken care of. Um, we'll be able to send that over on uh, on Mike's uh, YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash AKA Mike B. Yeah. And it should be pretty cool. Okay. We did that. Cool. Um, and I think we did all of the stuff in here. Yep. Back to back to back to digi who mode. Back to not giving a shit. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought we were Jesus. done. I, I stopped giving so many fucks. I, I thought we yeah. were just done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess we should. You're still recording and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. I'm still recording. Okay, I guess we should probably talk about what's happening with Digihu. Oh, have we decided on that yet? <laughs> so that's that was what I was gonna say. Is I don't think we've really thought about what's happening yeah. with Digihu as usual, as is the Digihu way. We're so excited about the new hotness, we forgot what the fuck we were gonna do with the old and busted. Yeah. Hey, Digihu. Let me, let me. So Digihu started as as a show that. You know, we 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 talked about it. And I, I, you, I think you said, um, well, I don't know. We were just like, we miss doing shows together. We liked doing shows. Mm-mm. We miss doing shows. But Josh is busy working full time. I think I was at Zam, I think, when 
Yeah. Yeah. And so I was working and it was like, okay, we need something that's just like, we don't super low, 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 low production. Like basically just take all of the, all of the uh, expectations and all of the hopes and just throw them on the crown. <laughs> and that's it. And and that's actually how we came up with the name, obviously, is because yeah. don't get your hopes up. Because the literally name, like the no. first line. Yeah. yeah. The, the this name is a itself. podcast, don't get your hopes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it set it sets the precedent that, you know, don't get your hopes up just in case, you know, we're not we don't we don't stream uh or we don't do the show every week or you know, something weird happens in the middle of the show. Like the time that, uh, I think whether the cops outside or something once with me, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. You don't know what to expect, but don't expect too much. Yeah. That's pretty much been the theme of that show. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I could see an environment in which we decide to have a digi who like, maybe there's a thing that comes up that we both want to talk about, but isn't really relevant for the internet famous or, uh, maybe there's like, there was so much that happened in a given week that we are like, fuck it, let's just have a DigiWho and just ramble about other stuff that we want to talk about or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could see, I could see ways that DigiWho could basically stick to its current schedule of happening maybe once in a whenever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, we'll see. The, well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The hope is that at the very least, um, Internet Famous will be a good enough show that you almost don't even miss DigiWho. There you go. 